Well, I decided to learn Blender. It is a 3D modeling software and I am a game developer. So there is a lot of need for it. I have been a game developer for a while now, but I have never kind of given any thought to it. I don't know why. It is probably because I'm very focused in programming. I just think of myself as a programmer. But I want to learn Blender and make 3D models for my own game. I don't want them to be super realistic and super good. I just want workable models and probably I will get good with it with time. I'm just, I'm just hopeful. <laughs> so yeah, for today my goal is to kind of make models good enough to put in my game. So let's do it. Hopefully we'll make something good. Alright, so let's get into learning Blender. YouTube is our guy, right? YouTube has all the tutorials. Actually, it has a lot of tutorials and it's just too much. Like there's tutorials for Blender 2.8, there's for 3.4, 3.0, something. there's like a lot of versions. And if you're also planning on learning Blender, then I'd say just go with any tutorial you want to. The versions don't really matter. There will be some changes in the newer versions, so you can just google it and find it out. So this tutorial I'm following right now is kind of teaching me how to make a hammer. I do know a little bit of Blender, alright? I have been a game developer for a while now, so I do have some knowledge. I could have probably made this hammer on my own, but probably would not have turned out how it did. By the way, following this tutorial did help me a lot. I kind of learned about loop cuts and I also learned how to turn things into spheres. As you can see, one side of the hammer is little round. It kind of needs us to kind of transform the thing into a sphere. It's pretty cool. Alright, now that I know how to kind of work with Blender, I want to make something. I'm kind of making a game right now which kind of needs me to make a spider. I'm not very sure if you're going to watch the video of me making this game with the spider, but for now I want to make the spider, so let's get into it. I'm not very sure how this is going to turn out, it is not going very well for now, cause you know, it's, it's not easy. I do have reference images, but this is not turning out well, maybe I should drop it. So the spider thing is dropped, the body of the spider is just too different, uh, I just probably need to kind of make something I'm used to, which is probably a human, I think I could do it. Well, as you were seeing right here, it kind of does look like a human, uh, well, to some extent it does look like a human, but I'm still not very good at the details, like the legs and the hands are just really out of the world here. They, they don't look good at all. You know what, since the human I was making did not work out, I'm just going to go through a tutorial and actually I found something really interesting in this tutorial that I could use something called a mirror modifier. There are very cool things in Blender called modifier, they kind of just do magic, they're like just very cool functions which kind of just makes things a lot easier. So whatever I do in one side is going to kind of happen in the other side too. As you can see right here, the cube is kind of extending to both the sides. I'm not exactly doing that. I'm just extending one of the sides. The other is being modified by the mirror modifier. Mirror modifier, mirror modifier, alright, that's hard to say. This kind of makes it very easy for us to make something which is like same on both the sides, which is a human too. So I just need to kind of make one side of the human and the other side would be done. Uh, that is pretty cool. Right now the human model looks like this. There are some problems which I am kind of fixing here. Like as you can see it is very thin. So I'm just making some small changes. The tutorial I was doing is like complete. I just kind of did some mistakes which I'm trying to fix. I'm kind of trying to make some small changes and fix the model here. And this is what it looks like right now. I added a subdivision modifier which kind of makes the model even smoother and now I'm making some more changes. As you can see the hands are not as big and I'm just making some small changes to make the model look even better. What I've come to understand after kind of working a little is that you can just make a thing look a lot better with just small changes. Like small changes just make wonders. 
And the next thing to do is rigging. Now comes the fun part and also the annoying part which is animation. Now this we need cause most certainly we need to make a player in any kind of game that we are making and it needs to be animated. And let me tell you this alright, let me tell you this, it is just super easy. I mean the animation part is up to your own skills on how you kind of it kind of depends on your knowledge of animation and just animation has a lot of things going on but but I'm talking about Blender. Blender makes it super easy to animate. After that it depends on your skills of course. So as you can see right here it is the model. It is right here in probably wireframe mod or something like that. I forgot what it was called but you can see through it right now. And you can see these little triangles or I don't know what you'd call them but let's call them bones which they are. So they are just bones. Like there's this head bone, there is some hand bone, leg bone. So that's what it is. You move the bone, the muscles move. And then comes the next part which is called weight painting which is kind of attaching or giving the power to the bones. Like if you have the bone under your bicep, that bone is supposed to move the bicep muscle. But it can also kind of move your neck muscle a little. It can move some other parts a little too and that kind of depends on you on how you want to paint that weight. You want to kind of apply the weight to your bone right on which muscles it will move. That's basically it. And well to add into that, Blender kind of does this automatically. And you can also kind of do your own custom changes but for me it just worked out automatically. I'm just playing around with it now. Well here's a sneak peek into something I'm making. Well you probably don't get it but I'm kind of trying to make a Harry Potter game right now. And it is still in making. It's probably going to take some time. I mean it's a small game. I'm going to make a video about it. But right now I'm trying to kind of pose the character into dad. I'm kind of trying to make the character kind of you know ride a broom. <laughs> I think it looks almost like it. Animation will come later. I'm just trying to kind of figure out the pose here. And well, I did animate it and this is what it looks like. It is supposed to loop in Unity so just think about that. Right now it does not loop but it is supposed to be the idle animation though. I think it is kind of working out, I'm not very sure. Alright, so we are in Unity. I kind of exported the character to just see how it looks. Actually I got rid of that whole broom riding thing, it was stupid, so we have this walk cycle which is even worse. This is, this is supposed to be a walk. Alright guys, comment below what do you think that was. I mean that was supposed to be a walk but it did not turn out to be a walk. <laughs> that was weird. You know what, animation is just not in my list right now. I will put a lot of time into it in perfecting my animation skills but for now I want to be able to make a model to put into my game so that is what I'm doing right now. I'm kind of making a hat. So I'm trying to make a wizard hat and it is not turning out well. Well I was doing it without reference so let's get some reference. As you can see this looks pretty good. I mean they are pretty good hats but we don't really want to add that many details. Most certainly we don't. So let's get into it. I think now we have some reference images and we can make a good hat. Alright, that took some time but we have a great looking hat right now I think. At least it looks super good after we flatten it out and things. And then I kind of also added material to the object. It is super easy. It is almost as same as Unity. You just need to assign the material and it just becomes colorful so it's super easy like that. Right now at this moment I think I am done with Blender. I think I have enough knowledge to kind of make models for my game from now on but I want to do something. I want to do something kind of just as the end of the video here. So I kind of thought why not make a free bag for itch.io free game assets bag. 
which is going to be terrible because I'm really bad at this 3D modeling thing. But let's do it. I'm going to make some free swords for people to use on their games. <laughs> I'm not very sure who is going to use them, but let's do it. And well, as you were seeing right now, I'm having a lot of fun making this. This is like super cool. I do have some reference images, but I'm just going nuts over here. Just making different kind of swords. And this is the end product. This looks weird, I know, but hopefully someone finds them useful and use them in their game. And that's it. That is it for now. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to hit the like button, smash the subscribe button, and share the video with your friends and family. And if you want this free acid sword pack, then it is available on itch.io for free. You can use it free commercially, non-commercially. Just go and use it. There will be a link in the description.